Thanks for watching, and today I want to solve the interesting question of finding functions such that f of cx equals cf of x. In other words, functions for which we can just pull out the constant here. And later this will give us an interesting introduction to projective spaces, which is a very cool topic in algebra. Now, for the case for functions from R to R, this is actually super easily solved because notice it's just based on this clever trick. Consider f of x, well this is the same thing as f of x times 1. Well, and because it's multiplicative like that, we can just pull out the constant, which is x, and this becomes x times f of 1. And notice this is of the form c times x, where c is literally just f of 1. C, si, senor. And in other words, the only functions with this property are precisely the linear ones. So f of x equals to a constant times x. So in the case of from r to r, this has completely been solved. Now, uh, however, what the question is, what about higher dimensions? And there are actually two very interesting counterexamples for this. Because in fact, let's take the case of functions f of x comma y. So functions, let's say, from R2 to R. And as I said, there are many examples of such functions. For instance, what you can do, take f of x, y. So not square root of x squared plus y squared. That wouldn't quite work. But let's take cube root of x cubed plus y cubed. And you can indeed check that if you take f of cx, which would be f of cx cy, that is cube root of uh, c cubed x cubed plus c cubed y cubed, then you can just pull out the constant c cubed with this cube root, then it just becomes c times cube root of x cubed plus y cubed which, again, you cannot do with square roots because you would find an absolute value of c. So that doesn't work. Now, this is kind of the boring counterexample, or what I like to call the analysis counterexample. Not to say that analysis is boring, it's the inverse of that. Uh, but now let me show you the cool algebraic solution. And it actually leads to the concept of what's called a projective space which is useful in algebra, geometry, and algebraic geometry. Now, consider the space where our input lies in, which here is R2. So again, the case with x and y. And what the projective space is, is simply as follows. Just subdivide R2 into lines going through the origin. So in other words, consider all the lines going to the origin. Not like this, or again, in general, it's just all the one dimensional subspaces of a vector space. Right. Very good. Right. Something like that. And, and then what you do, you just consider an equivalence class saying that uh, two points are equivalent if and only if they lie on the same line. So, for instance, those two points are equivalent, but also this third point is equivalent because they all lie on the same line. And in terms of a function, what that really means, and hopefully it makes sense, if you know uh, the value at this point, you actually know the value of your function on the whole line. Because, for instance, if this is x and you know f of x, and let's say if this is 2x, then just by definition, you know f of 2x because by definition, that's just 2f of x. And if you know f of x, you then automatically know f of 2x. So what does that mean? It means to completely determine f, you just need to know one point on each line. And if you think about this, this is just equivalent to the following. Namely, to know the function on all of R2, 
We just need to know the function on each point of the unit half circle. So this thing here. The circle of radius 1 in the upper half plane. And we exclude this because it's just equivalent to this point. So as I said, if you know the function f on this upper half hemisphere, I guess, or upper semicircle, then you know all the values on f. Mm. And this actually allows us to define a counterexample because simply define f as follows. On this part, right, um, f is just 1. So again, which I believe it means, uh, um, let's say here, you know, at point x, y, I believe that just gives you f is square root of x squared plus y squared, uh, which is okay because uh, um, here everything is positive. And on this uh, quadrant, if you want, so on this part of the half circle, just define f to be zero. So in other words, again, just to reiterate what that means, in this quadrant, f is just zero. In this quadrant, f is square root of x squared plus y squared. And in this quadrant, or something, yeah, uh, f will just become, okay, maybe let's define it here also to be 1 and here to be 0. Uh, in this quadrant, f will be also square root of x squared plus y squared. And lastly, in this quadrant, f will be 0. And you can check that indeed, even here, we would have f of cx equals cf of x. And why is this useful? Because it turns out it's an example of a function which satisfies this multiplicative property but does not satisfy the additive property. So in other words, which is not linear. And why is that? And here's a very neat contradiction argument. Suppose it were true that f would be linear, then actually linear functions are continuous. Just apply an epsilon delta argument. But this function is definitely not continuous because it, and this circle, it jumps from its values being 1 to its values being 0. So definitely not linear, so it can't happen. So in particular, uh, this um, property fails. So just to show you, there are examples of functions which are uh, this homogeneous property, but which do not satisfy the linear property. All right, I hope you like this little primer in the world of projective spaces. If you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.